Well, we're now joined by Ellie Harrison, a campaigner for fully integrated transport. Ellie, first of all, you've been keeping a close eye on all this today. Yeah. What's your initial reaction? Are you happy with this progress? It's progress, but it's only a tiny, tiny little bit of progress and it's not going to do enough to get people using public transport to the extent that we'd like to see um, to reduce carbon emissions. And so the main problem with this proposal is that there isn't a daily price cap for passengers. So every journey you take on the bus, the train, um, subway, whatever other modes of transport you're using, you're going to have to pay for each and every one. So you could end up racking up a huge bill on this smart card, which is obviously not going to in incentivize people to use public transport. How, how do you see it working then? Explain the idea of a price cap to us. I mean, a price cap obviously is a cap price, but uh, you know, yeah. you, you can take as many journeys as you want and pay a maximum of a couple of quid. Yeah, I mean, that's how it works. They, in the clip there, they were comparing this to the Oyster card. The yeah. Oyster card has had a daily price cap since it was introduced in 2003. So it means that you will only pay up to a limit and you can travel as much as you need to around the city during that day. And that's what we would like to see in Glasgow, but ultimately we'd like to see that across the whole of Scotland. I mean, how realistic is that though? Because we've seen already to get to this point, it's taken a, an awful lot of time, you know, to get everybody signed up into using this one card. How realistic is it to get all these different operators, you know, trains, buses, everything, to sign up to one set price? It's easy. I mean, the transport minister has the powers. All he needs to do is regulate the private companies that are providing the different services. That's the hold up. The private companies have got too much power over the, over the system. And of course, they don't want their profits to be eaten into. But that's what we're going to need to do because we need to reduce the cost of public transport to get more people using it. You want the government to come in and tell private companies how much they have to charge? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, because there's huge inequalities across Scotland. I mean, a single fare on first bus in Glasgow is £2.50. A single fare on, on publicly owned Lothian buses in Edinburgh is £1.70. As soon as you get out into rural areas, it, you can get up into t double figures for a bus fare. And that, the, the Scottish government claims it cares about equality. It's got the power to set a national fare structure and just so that we know that wherever you get a bus, anywhere in the country, you're only going sure, to pay... But don't you then get bus fare. companies coming in and saying we can't afford to do it at that price and then what they do is just cut the services. This village only gets one bus a yeah. day rather than four. Well, that's what they're doing at the moment. Um, but we are giving uh, the private bus companies in Scotland nearly £300 million a year in public subsidies. And it's a really inefficient way to run a public transport network because they just run where they think they can make most profit. They're taking all of that public subsidy mm. and they're hiving um, some of it off in profits to, to shareholders. So we we know that's a really inefficient way to run a public transport network and that that public subsidy could be much better used by regulating the buses or running them in public ownership and yeah. then you can get integrated public transport. You can get your trains working in harmony with your buses and your subway and that's ultimately what we need to get more people using public transport. Yeah. You're forever hearing people saying, you know, I've been to this European or that European, this one city or the other, and saying, you know, they do it so much better than us. Yeah. And, um, you know, why, why do you think that Scotland is potentially, you know, lagging behind? Well, we are lagging behind a huge amount, and it all comes back to when the buses were deregulated in 1986. So at that point, um, bus companies basically decided where they wanted to run. There was no coordinated plan anymore, so they just ran wherever they could make the most amount of profit. And 33 years later, we are still dealing with that same situation. And the Scottish government has had the power to re-regulate the buses since devolution. And that's what it needs to do. So in a sentence, if you could, how, how far away could we be from a system like they have in London where you just tap your phone against a scanner, you can make as many journeys as you want, and it takes care of it for you for the whole of the day? Well, there, there are new powers in the Transport Bill which will allow for re-regulating the buses. They should come into effect next year. But our campaign is then going to be campaigning for them to be used and there will be a set up cost to do the plan yeah. to regulate the, the buses but the Scottish government's got to fund that because ultimately we will save money by doing this and we can reduce the cost of public transport to passengers and get more people using public transport and out of their cars. Yeah ultimately that's the goal isn't it. Listen thank you very much indeed Ellie, for being with us yeah, this evening. Thank you.